I have no idea what I'm doing with the edit of these videos, but uh, I was working on that, giving up because it's raining lots, because it's Storm Dennis. So I'm down at the bottom of the garden with Dotty. The weather is shite. It's very wet indeed. The garage is leaking, the floor's wet, but <clears throat> I want to get the fuel tank out which means jacking up the back of the car and then hopefully oh god damn it there is a puddle there yeah jack the car up nice and high get the fuel tank down and then i can start chopping away at that rear floor area i've been around with dad's and i've brought back my rear floor section so i'll look at the two and see where it might make sense to join it or where it might make sense to just plate it and patch it. The light in here is not the best and the GoPro is not very good at lighting so or low light conditions so bear with me. <coughs> Now we can have our first look under the car. I don't think I've actually ever been under this one, have I? Maybe it was at the front. Oh, here we go. So, fuel tank filler neck. That actually looks really good. That breather's knackered. No nasty rust. A little bit at the bottom. Most of that is actually pretty damn good. So that's nice. That we might have to cut there's a bit of grot behind there uh fuel tank doesn't look so bad either damn it already in a puddle that is where the training arms bolt in and it doesn't look so bad it's obviously bad at the top i think somebody's already been under here and stone chipped or something so this isn't factory stone chip the fuel tank i have to say actually looking really good the exhaust looks like most original parts and then pattern part rear section that's not so bad um in terms of getting the fuel tank out we've got these two here which i'll have to clean up and then get some wd-40 on and then there's a hanger at the back which i'll have to get to oh it's got adjustables adjustable rear dampers which are very past it looking I doubt that is adjustable any longer training arm fork looks good the rear axle still has its training arm cups on which is nice which is that bit there that cup usually rots out and disappears the rear axle looks like it's been repainted I don't know whether that swapped when it had the V8 conversion because the rear um, diff ratio will have been different. Anyway, I'm going to go find some WD-40 and a brush and clean up some of this ready to come off. I'll also get that wheel off and um, start looking at how to remove the filler neck from here. I'm not even sure I've got a key for that, which will be a pain. It's definitely getting soggier my puddle down here is growing so this is not going to be a fun and enjoyable afternoon I also can't find my electric drill with the wire brush attachment on it which would have been nice to have had for this job They seem to be all right. I might appear 
to be optimistic on some of these projects, especially when you've got rust holes like that. But here's the weird thing. I think all of the rear of this car has been apart and been rebuilt because that Watts linkage appears to be brand new. Often that sort of reinforcer bit on the top there is rusted off. It's there and it's still got paint on it. So there's no way that's original. The diff and the actual, the, that center torque tube should be bare uh, aluminium. It's not, it's painted black. I think the whole rear axle has been painted black and it's actually in really good nick. So yeah, and the fuel tank looks mint. So it might look like a dumb project to take on, but this thing's really actually solid. That's the drain plug for the sill. And again, you've got some surface rust here, but no major rot other than at this rear end, which is, you know, probably half an hour's work. So optimistic project, but probably, well, in my opinion, worth doing. That's my lovely puddle that I'm currently sitting in. These look like stainless ones. I would ordinarily just chop them off for the grinder, but if I can save them, better still, and I'll lube that bit up as well, because that needs to come off. Right, excuse me, I'll go and find uh, the right socket. That's a result. Yeah. Theoretically, that is ready to come down. I shall reposition the jack, get the rest of the bolts that I left on finger tight, take them off, and see what happens. basically down, the only thing holding it is the, um, the wiring for the old tow bar. Exactly. So there we have one fuel tank. What I thought was a rusty tank isn't, it's just rust that had dropped off the rest of the car and landed on it. Most of that's pretty damn good. On these, from uh, personal experience, that breather rots out, as does the metal in and around these two. But I think we're in luck. That's just surface. The seam looks pretty good. Often they blow apart. There's one broken stud in there which uh, I already knew about because that's when I unbolted the sender unit. Then let's have a peer inside. Yeah, that's gonna need a serious flushing. Uh, the walls of the tank look okay. In fact, it might actually have been lined. I'm not sure. Usually they just look mild steel. Anyway, I've got a spare tank if I need it. If not, that one can probably be put back into service with a bit of TLC. So that can come out of the way and we're gonna have a first good look under the car. In fact, why don't we do that now? Under here, we have my puddle. Then we have massive rusty hole where the rear seats were. Again, it's all from the top down. So I'm hopeful that with a bit of patching that could be repaired. You can see somebody has over-treated the whole of this rear area. Looks like there was some kind of patch repair made up there, which is no bad thing. That's the hanger for the rear of the tank. The rear axle cross member looks fine. It's still got its bushes in there, which is good. That's the heel board area, which will need to be 
lovingly repaired. Um, but yeah, it's really that nasty bit there, so I'm going to go and recharge the battery in this little thing, and then get the grinder out and see where the good metal ends. Right, while the camera was charging, I've taken out the rear door cards <coughs> so I don't risk getting sparks on them. Now I've got my lighting set up so that I can see what I'm doing. And this is the area of interest. You can see, or I can, I don't know whether you can, this is the bitumen backed sound deadening pad and it has these like oval cutouts and the water has just sat in and around that area and then just completely rotted the metal out so my plan is to just that's the seatbelt mounting point so i want to leave that the other one's over here which is okay that is the inner sill and i think it's okay but we'll see so for the first exploratory cut i'm just going to cut straight along here down there up to about here then across and just kick that out and then we can or I can more carefully cut back to where I'm sure there's good metal. So that's the plan. And hopefully you won't steam up in the meantime. Hopefully that's somewhere close. funny how as soon as you chop rust out it looks a lot easier to manage uh, that I will need to get a grinder or a sander on just to make sure I've got back to good metal and I also want to clean that bit up really well because there's no point putting a patch in over the top if that's not solid so I'm gonna go find my sander and then film the next stage So, good news, <clears throat> that panel there, we've got some surface rust, but that is about one and a half to two mil thick. So I don't have any concerns whatsoever about structural integrity of that area. The pan itself, I have only sanded in a few areas where I know there's good metal. Basically this bitumen stuff is clogging up my blade. So I'm going to get a knife and cut a nice straight line through there and then a hammer and chisel to separate it. Same along this edge. Then I'll draw some nice straight edges where I want to cut and I can make some final neater cuts and then I can go look at my donor panel and work out how to split and separate it so that I've got a nice neat patch to go in on top. annoying anyway that side's looking very much nicer um, <laughs> I didn't want to have to do that bit so that's really very annoying indeed it begs the question do I chop the whole thing out and I think I already know the answer to that is going to be no because I would involve doing all the seatbelt mounts and what you can't see from this side is down here there's a big reinforcer that I can feel but you can't see um, so I don't want to disturb that bit. That bit is just a simple skin. So I think I'll just chop a patch to go over there. 
call it evens. Whew. It's like Concourse car, as I've said many a time before. Um, I keep talking about this police car that I did, and there's some videos on it on the internet. But basically, I repaired this area in that car, and it was all done as an invisible repair. So because I could get to both sides of the body shell, I seam welded it and then linished it flat and smooth from both sides so literally would never know that that car had had a repair in that area whereas this one i really can't be bothered i'm out of breath again because i just carried that down the road that is the whole seat apron bit obviously that's where the fuel tank bolted in uh, this is the bit I've just chopped out so that's the section I'm going to take now it would be nice to have picked all of this apart and put it in but as I keep saying it's not a concourse it's just to get it done so I'm not going to bother because it would actually be a bit of an ass to join uh, that's one of our pieces that I'm going to need um, then it's going to be cut along here down through here I think around there something like that yeah about that um, and then the other bit I need is that bit and then we'll worry about this bit later so those cuts are easy they're just straight with the grinder but I will need to probably drill out these plug welds uh, and you can't get to them back from the back side because you've got lots of thick metal here this is why i'm quite happy with that section being as it is because the captive thread to the training arms are perfect that is like it's at least 1.2 it's probably one and a half mil that's definitely one and a half mil so even if i've got surface rust on this face of it it's not going to worry me once it's treated and there's no more water sat on it it'll be fine so i'm going to Go find my spot weld drills, or just drill bits, charge up my drill, take those ones out, measure up the bit I need, chop it out, and then sand it to fit. And it's not going to be a butt weld, it's literally going to be a patch, slapped down on top, welded down. Oh, should be jobs are good. Okay, it's still raining, quite obviously. I've been getting that section out that I want. <coughs> But before I finish, I just wanted to show this. Because even though this is a, you know, bare untreated panel, it is a genuine one, obviously. And you can see this sort of sealer. That's actually between the two panels. They're squidged together and then the spot weld tool goes through but there's always seam sealer, or it's not seam sealer, I don't know what it is, some sort of weld through sealer in between the panels. And it's the same down here. And this is why I always get a little bit nervous when people get body shells dipped, because it's not like blasting, where blasting you're just going over the surface. The dipping, the chemicals are eating all of this stuff out from every single panel in the car. So you imagine you get your nice shiny clean body shell back, but there's nothing stopping sort of fatigue setting up between these spot welds and then they just ping off as you drive the car so yeah i'm always slightly suspicious that cars that have been dipped are gonna you know if you go down a bumpy road start pinging spot welds apart anyway just my two penneth worth uh, that's nearly ready to come out i just need to go through in a couple of places with the grinder again and then um yeah should pop out and then i can trim it down to final size in the car some wiggling later and we have our repair panel of sorts it worked out quite neat because that was the bracket for the seat belt that i didn't want to chop through and i've just missed it which is nice oh, that makes things easier i still haven't managed to get that door open so that is why i'm going through the front every time ta-da like it fucking grill there and that's because it pretty much did so that's uh gonna want some final trimming some etch priming and maybe some rust treatment i want to hammer that seam back nicely 
then it can be welded in. Uh, so I'm going to continue until I get really fucked off with this weather. But yeah, that's going to be quite a neat repair. I mean, it sounds silly. You could make it as an invisible repair, but there's no point. That's where the rear seats go and the fuel tank goes underneath it. So you're never going to see it. So unless you happen to be trawling through YouTube and finding these videos, uh, you're never going to know otherwise. I'll also, while I've got the grinder out, nip that panel out. Ready for that bit. But yes. Okay, cool. I thought I broke my GoPro, but it appears to be working again now. It was reluctant to switch on. Ah. Uh, where's my torch? Damn it. There it is. So we have pitted but solid metal. There's the flanges here and here, which I kind of want to go away. So I might go and find the die grinder, get rid of that. We've still got some nasty seam sealer in this corner, which will be impossible to weld near. But look how solid that is. This, if you're restoring an SD1, is the problem area. It's not hard to fix it's just a pain to get to you either have to cut the outer sill off or work from the inside out and there's three layers of metal there and it's a pain so very good that on this car that's all solid nibbler thing not a nibbler what i want about die grinder thing and no power all of a sudden Again, more seam seedery stuff in there. Um, <coughs> apologies for the noise. That really is a nasty, nasty rapey tool. But I do love it because uh, as you can see, <coughs> it just munches its way through most things. So that can all be cleaned up. It pretty much is all cleaned up. And then I can put some Hydrate 80 on it. And then it's zinc primer time. And then weldy time. Okay, so that bit is <coughs> being rust treated. Uh, I'm now gonna do that bit. Uh, that hole is a little bit kind of on the optimistic size. So meaning that it's probably less metal there than I need. What am I on about? Basically, oh, I'm getting tired. Bigger bit, that is what I was trying to explain. So I'm gonna chop that out do what I did last time, just clean it up, cover it in zinc paint, and get ready to weld it in. <laughs> so that bit will go on there. When that's dry, I'll come back, trace around it chop that bit out neater and then I can do welding but I think that is where I'm going to call it a day for today because I can't be bothered to do any more if I'm honest this is the next area for concern well no it's not the next area that's the other bit but in upcoming videos what have I done with my goddamn torch oh bollocks one moment right apologies for swearing this is the floor thank you the die grinder thing has just demonstrated that it's not quite the sort of floor you'd ordinarily expect um i have been trying to work out how best to go about doing this I have all of the metal I need. I've got a whole floor pan, like from the heel board right the way forward to the bulkhead. 
so I could put the whole thing in. That is a massive job because the engine and box has to come out, the dash has to come out, the car will have to go on the rotisserie, be turned upside down, all of the chassis rails have to come off and quite frankly I can't be bothered. So I think I am just going to put sections in. The sensible order of things would be to finish that seat pan, that whole seat pan that side, heel board this side and then do the floors. Um, how much of the floor has to come out I don't know. I don't really want to pick any more out until I've put some strength back in there. The other benefit of um, patching it is I don't have to weld braces across the whole thing and then risk bending the shells. I pick it up on the rotisserie. I think all the doors and the tailgate and the rear axle front subframe would all have to come off to go on the rotisserie because it will just bend the car otherwise. And I just don't have the space or time or basically I'm a bit lazy. So uh, usual disclaimer. It's not a show car. It's a car that, that owes me zero money. I think I actually made money off it selling some of the bits that came for free with it because it was a complete unknown to me and I didn't want to like invest loads of time and money into something that was just going to be like broken up for spares. So yeah, it's not a show car. It is just a survivor car, but one that does have potential and a lot of character. So we shall persevere. Right, I'm going in for a cup of tea and to watch TV. In readiness for the potential of doing dotty on the rotisserie, I borrowed back my rotisserie frames. I don't have the whole thing because I lent it to my mate for his BMW and it's down at a body shop. But essentially, those prongs go into the uh, chassis rails at the front of the car where the towing eyes are and then bolt through. This one is for the back of the car and bolts onto the rear bumper bolt holes. And then there are two uprights, which these things sit through and you jack the whole car in the air and then you can just spin it round. So it makes doing stuff like floors a piece of piss because you can get to both sides, but it does require the car to be cut down or like broken down to a bare shell. Uh, this will be the end of the video, but I'll try and find some pictures of the police car when I did that and the rotisserie in action so you kind of know what I mean. See ya!